All right, it is a story that I have been wanting and waiting to tell for quite some time. Finally got around to it. It is the story about the John Stockton autograph signing and why it was the most stressful signing that I have ever been a part of, and it's not even close. Wow, and it's got nothing to do with John. John was great. Everything worked out on that end. It has everything to do with UPS, and I think you know where I am going with this story. Uh, I've got my trusty notes here to make sure that I cover everything and not forget any details for you here, Um, but let's jump right into it here. Uh, John Stockton, if you don't know, is a very important autograph signing for collectors. He is probably, along with Jordan and a couple other guys, probably one of the most important basketball autographs to get. He just doesn't sign very much. He's a dream teamer, and people really need him to to help finish out some dream team multi-sign items that they have. So just preface knowing going into this that this John Stockton signing is a very important signing. It must happen, and it must go down, okay? So now that you know that information about the signing, Okay, this will help tell the story a little bit here, all right? So this is not a guy that you can just knock on his door and have him sign again, okay? So he's got to sign these items, all right? So John Stockton is going to be signing in Spokane on a Wednesday. And so uh, typically how it works with a signing is we can have items arrive typically a day or two before the signing. We don't want to have it arrive before then. Because we're not going to have any team members on site to be able to, you know, watch over the stuff, open it up, make sure it's, you know, all processed and everything like that. So typically one to two days before our signing. So if it's a Wednesday signing, I'm shooting to have that stuff there on a Monday. Okay. So from Kansas City where we are to Spokane is a four day transit for UPS. Meaning if we ship it on a Wednesday, it technically is supposed to arrive in Spokane on a Monday. All right, so plenty of time for the Wednesday signing. Whenever I ship stuff to signings, I always like to make sure that I have at least a one-day buffer. There's always something that can happen where, you know, uh, a trailer gets missed, it um, doesn't make it to a facility on time, weather delays, there's always something that can happen. So when I'm shipping out stuff for customers, especially for a big sign like this, I want to make sure I give myself enough buffer. And plus, I know where Spokane is, okay? (laughs) Spokane is all the way in eastern Washington. It's a big city. There's a couple hundred thousand people that live there, but it's no major hub, right? It's not like we're shipping something to Dallas or to Houston or Chicago where, hey, if there's a problem, they can probably get fixed and turn around and, and quickly get to another city, okay? So, Getting things to Spokane might be a little tricky. At least that's what I'm thinking there. I've only been to Spokane once before in my lifetime. It was when I was 20 years old playing baseball. So um, it's not a huge place. So not a metropolitan, if that's got to get what I'm saying here. So we ship the stuff out on Wednesday. Uh, I watch it go onto the UPS truck. Okay, I've got seven boxes. I want to make sure that everything goes out. I've got air tags in every single one of those boxes. So I know exactly where they are assuming they are near a cell phone or an iphone they will ping all right so i know exactly where all these things are going all right so thursday morning wake up i check the tracking and we've got our first problem (laughs) so it missed its trailer. there's a late trailer coming into kansas city and it missed its trailer okay so if you don't know, UPS ships these uh, packages on these uh, big trailers. They usually put them on trucks or they can put them on uh, on the rail, okay? Typically, they're going to do trucks for kind of short-term stuff, long-term stuff. Potentially, we'll do rail because it's a little bit cheaper. So, it misses its trailer and it's delayed by a day already, all right? So, <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Okay, well, hey, at least I've got a day buffer built into this thing, all right? So, I'm checking it all out through Thursday. And I noticed that the packages are now in downtown Kansas City. And I thought that was a little weird. I never seen them go down to. There's this bar downtown called Knuckleheads. And they're right by Knuckleheads. <laughs> it, got, it got me thinking, why are they down there? This is kind of a little bizarre. Our hub here in Kansas City is in Lenexa, Kansas. Lenexa is basically between Kansas City and Lawrence, where KU plays. Okay, 
Downtown Kansas City is probably where these are at least 25, 30 minutes east. Okay, so not in the direction that we want to be going. And it's it's a rail yard there, so I'm thinking, okay, that's that makes sense. Maybe they're getting put on a rail car right now, but it's a little odd. Usually stuff doesn't go there. And so <clears throat> I'm just really don't think anything too much of it. I'm just kind of checking the tags and kind of making sure everything's going in the right direction, all right? And so it leaves from there, and there's no scans for, oh, about a day or so, which isn't completely unusual, okay? Uh, when stuff gets into a rail car, if you're not buying an iPhone, the tags won't ping, and if it's not going to a major hub and getting sorted there or put on another car or another truck, it's not going to have a scan either. So not seeing your AirTag or any scans on your packages for Two or three days going to the west or east coast is not completely you know out of the norm. All right. Uh, plus, I, on Thursday, I really wasn't really too concerned about any of this stuff here. Um, I was dealing with some Barry Sanders helmets that weren't getting to a signing on time, so um, that really wasn't much of an issue. Right? Friday comes around. I'm checking the tags again, and uh, there's no movement on them. Okay, so again, not completely out of the normal, but I thought maybe maybe they would have scanned somewhere outside of Kansas because there's like Hayes, Kansas is another place where it will go to beforehand. Maybe it would be in Denver at some point, some sort of scan along the way. And there's just nothing on uh, with Friday. So Friday, okay, not a big deal, right? We got the weekend. I don't really need this stuff to be there till Tuesday anyway, so I'm not really thinking too much of it. Again, I'm dealing with this Barry Sanders helmet. We had some helmets that we were supposed to ship to uh, Michigan. They needed to leave on Thursday. UPS did not pick them up on Thursday. So we had to figure out a solution to get these to Michigan on Monday. And they didn't need them getting there. I had to get them signed in Las Vegas during the Super Bowl. That's a whole other crazy story that I'll get to at some point. So, all right, here. Now we're getting to the meat of the story, all right? Monday morning, I wake up. And I'm just going to check the tracking again, see what it did over the weekend. My air tags pinged in in southern Idaho on Monday. So that's a good news, right? We're not too far from there. Again, it was Spokane is on the west or eastern part of Washington. It, it basically butts right up to, to Idaho. And so we're kind of in the right area. So I'm not really thinking it's going to be a, you know a, a bad story here. But hey, we're in the right vicinity, okay? Again, but there's still no scans, though. I, I just happen to know these are because of my air tags are in there. And it's a little weird not having any scans. We got we had Wednesday. Okay, it's shipped, it scanned out of Lenexa. There's nothing Thursday, nothing Friday, nothing Saturday, nothing Sunday. And here we are on Monday. Now, again, these things have to be there on Tuesday. And we've got that one-day delay that was already kind of taken out with the trailer. So, uh at this point on Monday, I'm starting to get a little little nervous. Uh, <laughs> I'm making some calls to some freight companies just in case that, hey, listen, if UPS can't deliver these on Tuesday, do we have the ability to come by and pick these things up? Like, get our hands on it. Like, that's one thing in freight. Like, if you can get your hands on it, at least you've got some options. UPS is a whole nother beast. They're not really like your typical freight company where it's like you can just leave it at a facility and come pick it up. Like they've got their processes and their systems done in place. All right. Uh, and the big problem that I'm running into here is I don't know what sort facility this thing is going to end up in. Again, it's going to Spokane, but is the hub going to be in Portland? Is it going to be in Seattle? Is it going to be in Spokane or is it going to be in Boise? I, I really don't know where these are. So I really can't tell my freight company, Hey, listen, I know these are going to be here. Go pick them up yet. So, um, again, if they could pick it up, they could possibly get these things on Tuesday. They can deliver them to me early Wednesday morning. And Hey, listen, we would be ready to go for John Stockton, who is going to be signing at 10 o'clock or not say nine o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So again, Monday, I'm just trying to figure this thing out. Spoke Portland's not too far from Spokane. It's only about five or six hours. So We've got some sort of options if we can get our hands on it, all right? I've called UPS probably a couple times. They can't even tell me what hub this thing is going to. So if UPS doesn't know or the piece of the people in customer service don't know, I think it's going to be a challenge to probably get our hands on it. Monday, I'm just I'm stressed to the max at this point because we still don't have any scans. All day Monday, there are no UPS scans and no pings on my air tags. At all, all Monday, 
we had um, we had girls basketball. I coached my sixth grade girls basketball. I'm the I'm, I'm not the coach. I'm the assistant. Um, let's get that clear. Um, and I, we got practice at six o'clock, and I am my head is in somewhere else. I'm literally checking my phone every 15 minutes, trying to get some sort of movement, some sort of hope on where these things are. Uh, are they lost at this point? I'm not, I'm not thinking that because why would all seven packages not have scanned in? Like if one was not scanned in, okay, maybe there's an issue there, but all seven, it means they're all on the same rail car and they're just haven't got to some facility for whatever reason. Portland, I come to find out did have an ice storm about a week or so beforehand. I was checking the weather before I shipped these to kind of estimate if there was going to be some problems up there, but there wasn't any, but there was that ice storm that eventually kind of did back up a lot of things in the Portland area. So uh, I get out of practice on Monday night, and uh, I'm about ready to go to bed, and there's still nothing going on. And at this point, I'm pretty sure these are not going to be delivered Tuesday uh, unless some sort of miracle happens. So uh, Monday night, I am literally up about every 15 to 30 minutes to check the phone for some sort of update. Why am I doing that? Like I'm going to have some sort of willpower over this thing. I don't know. I'm just looking for some sort of peace of mind on where these things are. Because again, it's mainly not my stuff. And it's probably the most important signing that I've done to date. And probably one of the most important signings for some of these collectors. You know, they're trying to figure out, finish out these dream team items or they're trying to get some sort of special, unique item done. Again, Stockton just doesn't sign all that much. All right, so Monday morning, uh, Tuesday morning, I wake up. Uh, apparently, you know, getting a little bit of sleep there, and again, nothing going on. So at this point, I've pretty much have like come to terms with this situation. I know Stockton is signing at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. And I am just coming to the realization like, okay, maybe this is the way it's going to be. Like this stuff is just not going to get signed. I'm going to do everything I can. I will go to the ends of earth for the customers to find this stuff, to get it. I will do whatever it takes. But I mean, think about this customer service that I'm going to have to do at this point. Like we've got 250 pieces in there. And I mean, this stuff's valuable stuff. This is not your run on the mill kind of stuff. So what are we going to tell customers that, Hey, listen, UPS did not deliver our boxes to the signing. Like they would understand that, but it's like, come on, dude. Like really? Like that's, that's how the story ends. Like what the hell? This is just crazy. So, uh, Tuesday I'm talking to, you know, the autograph agent and we're just trying to figure out a game plan here. Like, Hey, if somehow we can get these Wednesday, can we get John to still sign him? Is he going to be around? What are the options at this point? And, you know, John had something in his contract where, again, John had this uh, this notoriety bound that he was somehow difficult to work with. And I just did not find that at all when we did the signing with him. Like, it, for me personally, like, he was just great, you know. So, John had something in his contract that he said only two and a half hours he could sign. And if he didn't like it, he could leave. So we knew that, hey, listen, like if this stuff doesn't get there Tuesday, there's a good chance that this stuff won't get signed. Because even if it arrives Wednesday, he may not even be there. So, um, you know, seven boxes and 250 items, uh, that's pretty much hard to process very, very quickly and get it out and ready to, be, you know, get signed. So if it doesn't arrive Tuesday, there's a good chance that stuff's not getting done. Some good news. Tuesday, around 3.30, my AirTag finally pings in Portland, which is kind of where I thought they were going to go. Um, so that's kind of where I was telling the freight team that it might be. But um, they ping in there. There's still no tracking updates, meaning it has not made it to a UPS facility yet. And I do a quick little search on, on Google Earth, and I, I see the rail yard they're in. I know where it's at. And it's right next to a UPS facility. So it's just a matter of just getting the other rail cars out of the way and getting this one and getting it inside the hub so it can be processed and shipped out to wherever these uh, boxes need to go. So um, again, like I mentioned, there's 250 items in there, seven boxes. Like the guys on the ground, like they're going to be handling the signing on Wednesday. If this thing arrives Wednesday, there's zero chance it's going to get signed because they're not going to have the time to process all this stuff. So 
<laughs> I find the last flight out of here in Kansas City going to Spokane. There's one ticket left. I kid you not, one ticket left. My 11-year-old, the one I was coaching sixth grade girl about, she wanted to come with. We had talked about it in the morning a little bit, and she was she was bummed she couldn't come with. So she loves going to these signings. Maybe you saw her with the Devontae Adams video. Uh, so I pack all my stuff up. I rush out. I totally forgot my toothbrush and like all the little tiny stuff like that. I had clothes, which is all I really wanted to do. I made sure I had all the pens with. And I board a flight for Spokane going through Denver. And I get to Denver, oh, probably about uh, eight-ish or so. I touch base with the freight company to see if they can get their hands on this package. It's kind of a funny thing. On the way to Denver, I actually sat next to our regional FedEx rep. So I was telling him about the whole story. And he was telling me kind of how it might go down and, and if they can somehow put a hold on it. If it goes through a scanner, they can put a hold on it. They can pick it up there. But this facility was actually going to be closing at 5 o'clock. So there was no chance that we were going to be able to pick these things up on Tuesday. We were just going to have to kind of let it ride. And hopefully these things get there on Wednesday. If they get there during the signing, hey, that's fine. No problem. I'll at least be there. I can process the stuff. And, you know, hopefully John sticks around past those two and a half hours. We can get it signed. No big deal, right? At least that's what I'm hoping. Like, hey, the stuff's moving. It's scanning in. Hey, we're, we're in the right track here, okay? Uh, so I get to Spokane about 10 o'clock at night. And a real nice dude picks me up in my, uh, my Uber. He's got a brand new Ram truck. And I was thinking, man, you don't really get picked up in brand new Ram trucks around here. But he had just bought it apparently. And it was, it was slick, man. Super nice guy. We were talking all about Spokane. And he was telling me all about the homeless problem in Spokane. I don't know if you've been to, up in that area, but it's crazy amount of homeless people everywhere. You just wouldn't think that in kind of the cold climate up there. But it, they're definitely everywhere. Uh, he picks me up and takes me to the uh, hotel where the signing is happening. And I get there, meet with the agent, kind of tell him what's going on and check out the room on where everything's going to be situated. And John's, fortunately, he's got a lot of stuff in there. Like there's probably a good six hours worth of stuff that he's going to have to sign. So if he's liking it and digging it, like there's a good chance, hey, if this stuff comes Wednesday, I'm going to have some time to unpack it all, get it ready to go and get it signed. And you know everybody will be happy. So I get his rental car. Head back over to another hotel where the stuff is actually being shipped to. This was the original hotel where stuff was supposed to be at. Hotels got switched for the signing. So I've got to head back over to this other hotel with the rental car. It's only two miles up the road. And that way I can talk to the front desk, make sure that they know that these things are coming. And that if they can call me as soon as you know they arrive, somebody I can come and make sure I can pick those up there. So... I get in the hotel about 10.30, 11 o'clock or so, fire up the computer, got to do a little bit of work, and I'm checking the the, the tracking. The tracking says it's going to be delivered Wednesday. Wednesday by 1 o'clock is what it says. But the hotel, I had talked to them there, they usually get their packages about 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning or so. Usually the businesses kind of get before residential. So I'm thinking, okay, but there's a decent chance this might happen, all right? I'm checking the tags, and they're in northern Oregon. So... Good deal. We're heading in the right direction. Everything looks good. The um, you know freight company that I was going to work with isn't gonna, wouldn't been able to get their hands on this stuff until Wednesday morning anyway, so that's no good. So we just got to basically rely on UPS at this point. I wake up at 6 on Wednesday. Uh, wanted to check the tags a little bit, see where they were going, and they are in Spokane. However, it shows it doesn't show that the trailer has gotten to somewhere in Spokane yet which means again it hasn't been processed yet typically when these trailers got to get to a facility right like the team that's there the UPS people like they they've got time to process it's not the only trailer that's coming in they've got a they need at least a couple hours if not more than that to be able to process this stuff so this is at six o'clock and it's not really scanned in in Spokane I know it's there because I see my tags but uh, I just don't know what's going to happen if they're going to be able to process it. Again, the delivery says it's going to be Wednesday. So I'm up early. I'm going to be driving around to all these facilities on uh, Wednesday morning here. Uh, I get to the signing hotel at about 7 o'clock. Uh, I want to get some breakfast and some coffee, man. You need some energy for the day. And I had gotten a quick workout in that morning, so make sure I'm ready to go. 
and uh, I get to the signing, check everything out, make sure everything's good to go for it. I got everything set up, got some tables ready to go, and just wanted to check in with the other people, kind of let them know what's going on. I did have another two-day air package that was <laughs> ironically was shipped when Friday to deliver Tuesday. That still didn't deliver Tuesday either. So like I'm just I'm just getting crushed here, right? So I know where that one is though because I know it's scanned in in Spokane, and I know where it's at based off my tag. So. First things first, I head to that facility uh, at about 8 o'clock in the morning. This one is out by the Spokane Airport. It's a newer facility. So um, their customer service, believe it or not, UPS does not start uh, opening until 12 o'clock. And they're open like 12 to 5. So like no hours. It's it's not like you can just walk in there and be like, hey, can you go get my box? But that's what I did. I walked in. I saw this UPS guy. We we kind of made eye contact and, you know, we kind of had this little thing going for a second there, you know, and I was like, Hey man, can you, can you help me out? Like I, I need some help. I need, I need to find this package. And I had the tracking number pulled up for him and he's like, sure, man, let me see your ID and uh, I'll see if I can locate it for you. He goes through all these, there's probably, I don't know, 30, 40 trucks in there for UPS. He goes and he finds a box that's supposed to go to this hotel I'm at, but it's not my box. <laughs> it's another box that was delayed going in there. So I'm like, oh my God, can I just get a W here? Can I get a win, please? And it just uh, it just isn't my day. So I get that box. I plead him to go back and get the other box, but a supervisor finds out about it and he puts a kibosh on it. So I can't get that other box. So I've got this box. I head back to the other hotel, drop it off, tell him what's going on. And I'm just tracking all these other uh, boxes and trying to see, hey, are these things going to be delivered? But it's almost gosh it's almost what 11 o'clock at this point and it's not saying off for delivery so i'm pretty sure these are not coming i did have a ups overnight uh with eight basketballs that arrived and then i had another one with 17 jerseys that the the shipping manager at the hotel said they didn't get i was like what do you mean you didn't get the tracking shows is delivered here ironically enough the post office delivered that one to the <laughs> to the, the, the hotel front desk so i had to search all around the hotel to find this stuff I find that one. He's like, this is weird. Why are they doing I've never seen them do that. I'm like, dude, I don't know what's going on with this signing, but I'm not surprised by anything. All right, so we've got eight eight balls and 17 jerseys, and then we've got this two-day box that I'm going to go pick up at the hotel. I meet the UPS driver out there at about 1030. I've got this box, so I've got some stuff to get signed. I bring it back to the hotel, get it signed, And, um, now I'm out trying to head to another UPS facility, trying to find these seven boxes because I have not been able to locate it. Customer service opens up, opens up at 12 o'clock. I get there. I talk to a guy and he's able to figure out where these are. And ironically enough, they are back at the first facility I was at that morning. And so he's like, Hey, listen, I'll put in a request to see if they can hold these things. Maybe you can come pick them up. I was like, cool, man. Like this, if it doesn't happen now, it's not going to happen. So I jet on back over to this other UPS facility. I've been driving all around Spokane all day. I get to this facility, and there's very few cars out front, which tells me that most of the sorting guys are gone, if not everybody. And I open the customer service up because it's open there at 12, and I see the other super, the supervisor there that was there from the, this morning, the one that put the kibosh and everything. And so I was talking to the other guy about these seven boxes and this big ordeal and how I need to get these boxes. It's very important, blah, 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 right? And he's like, dude, I don't have anybody to open these trailers up and move these trailers, so they're not coming to you today. And so at this point, I'm like, holy crap, like John Stockton is signing right now. I don't have any, a very minimal of my customer stuff. What am I going to do? Um, and so luckily... John knows uh, like there are some boxes that are missing. So he's kind of prefaced about this a little bit, which is good. And so I came back and went back to the signing and you know talked to the autograph agent I'm like dude like this is this is this, this is the deal. He goes, "Okay, well let me let me talk to John and we'll we'll see we'll see what happens." So signing goes on. I'm just at this point I'm just kind of like numbed everything and I'm just kind of like, you know, it is what it is, man, like John seemed really cool and he only lives like two minutes from the hotel. So I was thinking, okay, this might happen. All right. So signing gets done. Agent talks to John. John thankfully agrees to come back the next morning when this stuff's going to be there. Like I talked to the UPS guys at the other facility. They're going to bring it out at like 10, 10 o'clock or so in the morning on the next day. So Thursday now. So over a week since I've shipped these things. And so 
I'm like, okay, well, that's great. You know, John's at least going to be there. We're going to get some stuff signed, assuming UPS delivers the stuff. So, okay, cool. Wednesday goes through, no problems, obviously. And I'm checking the tracking and it says, hey, address updated, delivery date Thursday by uh, one o'clock, which is fine. That's, that's normal time. That hotel gets stuff by about 1030. The hotel manager there and the um, shipping manager, they have the UPS driver's cell phone there. So they have all this stuff on tap. They know the tracking numbers they're looking for. So they're, they're ready to go. Like as soon as that stuff comes out, the, the driver's going to call us. We're on our way. I know what it is with my tags. So we're good to go. The deal was like on whenever those boxes come, we we're going to talk to the agent and tell him that the boxes are here. And then he was going to immediately t- uh, text John and tell uh, John that everything was ready to go. Well, we get these boxes and we text him and all of a sudden he says, John's going to be there in 10 minutes. <laughs> and I look at Mike from Beckett and I'm like, uh, like, do you think like 10 minutes, 20 minutes or 10 minutes, 10 minutes? And he goes, uh, John's pretty punctual. I, I think he's going to be here in 10 minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. So now we got to process 250 items and seven boxes in 10 minutes. Luckily, Mike's a pro and you know, he's just as good at this stuff as I am if not better. And so we get a game plan to go, Hey, let's just get some bulk stuff out that he can start signing right away. Basketballs, jerseys, whatever it is. We're clearing all the tables, getting ready to go. Um, and the deal was that Mike was going to be with John getting stuff signed. And I will start unpacking stuff. Cause I know where kind of everything is. So we're unpacking stuff kind of in this frenzy and 10 minutes. Sure enough, John arrived. Hey, we're ready to go. We've got some stuff for him. Mike starts handling it. Um, I'm pulling stuff off as he's getting it signed. I'm bringing more stuff in. I'm laying the pens on stuff, making sure everything's getting the right pen. I got to sort everything by pen color. And, um, you know, John, John gives us a good hour or so. And, and, and we were grateful for that hour, man. It was like, it was cool. John was great. I was telling him all about the, <laughs> the ordeal that we went through. And he's a Gonzaga guy. I'm a Santa Clara guy. So we're WCC guys. So we had that, we had that sort of connection there. Um, but it was, but we, we got what we got signed and Mike had to end up leaving to catch a flight back to San Francisco. So I had to pack all these things up. I had a flight at three 30 to Phoenix to get back to Kansas city. And so I rushed, packed everything up. I videoed the entire room to make sure I did not forget anything. I was like, oh, dude, I'm just, I'm rushing here. I hate when I rush. So I just want to make sure I do everything. I checked under every table, got everything and got every packed up, gave it to the shipping manager, called the pickup for the UPS. He called his driver and uh, I checked the tags, make sure they were moving um, before I left and they were. So everything was on its way back to Kansas City. So we got that stuff signed and, and just grateful to get it done. But holy crap, like, if you got something was from stock and like you were this close to like not getting anything done. And that was a scary, scary thought. Like we don't want a customer service, 250 items or whatever the, the piece count was. So, uh, fortunately, uh, that's what happened there, but it was, is Stockton going to be signing again? I don't know, but, um, my gosh, we were lucky to get this stuff signed. So that's the story. Um, again, Appreciate you guys listening. Don't forget to visit the website, powersportsmobility.com. Also, me follow over there on Instagram, at Powers Autographs. And I will see you on the next episode.